Hi, I'm Professor... You know what? It's way too hot for this shtick. I mean, for goodness sake. Climate change since 2012. I mean, it, it must have just... Ah, oh, yikes. Well, I mean, I guess I live a bit close to the coast now, but... You know what? I'm just here to say... You guys have been going on at me for ages. You, you've, you've been asking for this, and you know what? I've decided to cave, you know? I'm actually going to review Primeval. The board game. The Primeval Fierce Ferocious Future Predator game was published in 2008. It combines complicated mechanical parts with the simplistic gameplay of Ludo, all tied together with the iconography of Primeval. It also currently holds a 3 out of 10 rating on Board Game Geek, but I wouldn't put too much stock into that. After all, they're geeks, and geeks told me to watch 2001 A Space Odyssey, and that was crap. So how about a fair review from someone who isn't at all going to be tricked into liking something because of a beloved associated brand? To set this thing up, you first need to spend four years at university getting a master's in engineering. There are so many plastic supports and securing pins that if you put things together in the wrong order, you generally have to take the whole thing apart and start again. The showstopper piece of this plastic smorgasbord is this central anomaly piece, which lights up when you press it. Oh, crap. Give me a minute. Now, where were we? Yes, I actually had to buy two copies of this game to get enough pieces for the thing to actually work. Well, I guess it's time to set it up. <gasps> well, let's give it a test. Well, you see, despite all the electronics, the actual turning of the cogs is performed by hand. The electronic aspect is just the flashing of lights, which instruct you on which anomaly is open, and thus where the predator now resides. Its other function is to make incredibly annoying noises. Now let's have a look at the future predator itself. It's a pretty well made model, quite detailed and pretty accurate to the show. Unfortunately, it has pegs under its feet which hold it to the gears, which sort of spoils its use as anything other than a playing piece for this game. The character pieces are more simplistic. Each character is a picture printed on a sticker stuck to a plastic stand. The four characters chosen are Nick, Connor, Abby and Claudia. Presumably, the pitch for this game was only to base itself on the first season, which, considering it came out in 2008, probably makes sense. It is still odd to see Claudia, given that she basically only had six episodes. The choices of areas are also just limited to season one, but it's kind of more disappointing than that. The box says, The future, the past and present are colliding. Mysterious anomalies are opening all across the Earth, allowing a deadly predator from the future to travel between time dimensions. To close the anomalies and defeat the future predator, you must travel around the revolving board with light and sound effects through four different sectors. It sort of implies that these four sectors are going to represent each of these. However, the Permian is the only prehistoric time zone used. There's no sign of the Cretaceous. Heck, the only non-episode 1 zone is the London Underground. The school is particularly redundant, given that it's supposed to be in the Forest of Dean already, and it only appeared with the one character who isn't in the game. Before every go, the player must tap the central anomaly, which opens an anomaly in one of the four zones. by which I mean a light shines in one of the four zones. Actual gameplay involves rolling two dice. The first is a fairly simple numbered dice. It tells your player how far they need to move. The goal is the pretty simple Ludo goal, to go around the board once and stop where you started. Except, unlike Ludo, you only have one playing piece, so most of the skill of that game completely evaporates. Getting to the end supposedly closes the anomalies and defeats the future predator. 
which in Connor's case apparently involves going back to school, and in Claudia's case apparently means getting stuck in the Permian. The second dice either activates the anomaly or the future predator. If the anomaly side is rolled, and a player is stood on an anomaly tile, and the light is on in their zone, they get sucked into the anomaly. This almost never happens. The predator side, sometimes referred to as the dinosaur icon in the instructions, tells the player to move the predator to the illuminated side and how many times they need to rotate the central anomaly piece. If a player is standing in the firing line, they have to restart that zone. However, this almost never happens. The problem with this is that the anomalies are essentially just this game's version of quicksand or jail, something to be trapped in. It's a missed opportunity to use them as a means to actually travel between sectors, which I guess comes with only having one prehistoric one. Likewise, you enter the Permian the same way any other sector. There's nothing special about it at all. In fact, all four sectors are identical in the position of the tiles, right up to the anomalies and predator danger zones. It's a real shame because the ideas of Primeval would make for a really good gameplay. Jumping between time periods, tangling with different prehistoric beasts, in fact it would be really great as a cooperative game. But nope, apparently it's every man and woman for themselves, and Nick would rather watch Claudia Brown get chomped on by a future predator than have her close all the anomalies by trapping herself in the Permian. Maybe I'm being too harsh on this children's game, but in part it's because it's all we have for Primeval. Such a great concept wasted! And for comparison, let's look at the Walking with Dinosaurs game, aimed for children of about the same age. But this one has dynamic pieces that evolve over time, uh, six different zones which represent each episode of the show, and cars which actually ask questions about the dinosaurs featured. It actually sticks to the educational nature of the program. Or how about the Prehistoric Park game, which also has four sections, but they actually represent four different time periods, and it actually has time portals that actually act as time portals. Not only that, it has an end goal that actually represents what the show was about. In conclusion, does the Primeval game deserve a 3 out of 10 on BoardGameGeek? Well, probably. It doesn't really involve tactics or knowledge, just the luck of the dice, and while all the pieces and stylistic touches are nice, it all feels a bit shallow with such weak gameplay and all the missed opportunities. I convinced a group of friends to play it one Saturday evening, and while we all had a lot of fun knocking people over with the future predator, I can't see myself rushing back to play it, especially when I have these bad boys lying around. Although I will say one thing in Primeval's favour. It does allow me to reenact all my impossible pictures crossover universe fantasies. Oh no, the future predators are heading for the Triceratops paddock. Ah, I don't believe it! Settle down, you undisciplined rabble. I am your superior synonym. Ah. Oh no, my superiority! Blah. I guess Triceratops is the senior synonym to Taurosaurus. <laughs> Isn't there anyone who can stop them? Not any one, any two! <laughs> Somebody call for dashing male protagonists who know a lot about dinosaurs? Oh yeah! <laughs> Ah, you may have defeated my brother, but you'll never defeat me, or my army! Well, you may have an army, but we have... an Ankylosaurus! No, no.